Reverend Sex Life. My name is Nancy Okendo. Um, I'm also going to be talking about some tips to help improve the se sexual relationship. I'm sorry for my accent, but I have an autonomic mouthpiece. So my, my uh, accent is worse. <laughs> This is what it looks like, and this is what it feels like. Too bad. Too bad, yeah. Oh my gosh, that's now, so cute. As babies, all we know is pleasure. Hands down the pants, it just feels good. It has nothing to do with sex until somebody says, don't touch yourself. Don't touch yourself. Then as we get older, if we're teenagers and we express an interest in sex, what do we call it? Sluts. Right? And we still, even today, surprisingly, even today, we still hear those kinds of comments. We celebrate male gratification, but we shame women for the same. I'm going to do a post in this so you can read some of the things that are there. Like, you will only like me if I am beautiful, many partners, no respect, and other stuff like that.
percent of women and 25 percent of men. Desire for women is no longer spontaneous in long-term relationships for the most part. And long-term relationships, that could be at any age. And studies have shown us that long-term means six months to 18 months when that in-loss feeling kind of goes away. So if we lose that spontaneous desire, the feeling of being horny, that feeling below the belt, and it starts to matter more above the neck, really, or above the waist, the heart and the head. And our desire becomes more responsive, which means when our partner stimulates us, we respond to that stimulation and our desire kicks in. That's what triggers the desire. So what do we do? We have to commit to it. We have to choose sexuality. You have to choose it knowing that it's good for you. Knowing that you're going to feel good with it and that it gives you pleasure. But it's a conscious effort to choose sexuality. I'm going to give you a little example, which will give you an idea. At least it works for me. So how many of you here love going to the gym, especially like before your day? Oh, yeah. A couple of people. I mean, really, those are the gym rats in the room. Most of us, I think most of us, it takes quite an effort to get going to the gym, right? So your alarm goes off at, I don't know, five, six o'clock in the morning, and you know you got to get that workout in before the day. You get out of bed, you're like, oh, I have to go to the gym, and then you get your gym clothes on. Once your gym clothes are on, you're not going back to bed. You generally go. So you go to the gym, you work out. That workout always feels good. It feels good, you feel energized, you say, wow, that was great, I gotta do this again tomorrow, uh, I love it. Uh, okay, tomorrow comes and your alarm bell goes off at 5 a.m., are you gonna spring out of bed? No, even though you loved it, right? You don't have a spontaneous desire to go to the gym. <laughs> Make sense? The next step to, uh, to achieving really good, a good sexuality is an understanding of our bodies. There's mostly ladies here, right? How many of you, and I want to show of hands, to be honest, if we line up all your vulvas in a lineup, that's like the whole bit part, if we line them all up naked, how many of you would be able to pick yours out? Okay, a handful. There's a few guys, I see a couple of guys in the room. If we lined up, if we lined up the penises, I guarantee you every single one would pick them out, right? <laughs> yes. I knew it. <laughs> As women, we are blessed with an organ that is only for sexual pleasure. That's it, it's called the clitoris. As you can see here, it's not just a little tip that you feel. It is an entire structure. 75% of us women will not, cannot orgasm through intercourse alone. Doesn't matter if you stress it for 10 minutes or 10 freaking hours. It's not going to work, okay? We need clitoral stimulation to get us there. That's really important. And Interestingly, the latest research shows that the women who have uh, orgasms through intercourse, the distance between the vaginal opening and the clitoris is shorter. So they're getting more pressure. So the clitoris has to be involved. No. Make sense? Okay. But yet, I see women all the time. When I tell them these two facts, that desire is responsible for the spontaneous, that they will have orgasm through intercourse. The, the sense of relief, the, the, the look of relief is really priceless. And they're like, you mean, you mean I'm normal? You mean all this time? I thought there was something wrong with me. So retain those two tags, if you will, today. It's important. We are more normal than we think. Sexual health is a human right. And that involves sexual pleasure. Giving up on sex hurts us, hurts our relationships, hurts us physically even. Studies show us that people who engage in sex regularly live longer, look better, feel better, and have better relationships. So you don't want to give up on that. So what is the secret? The secret is understanding, it's really no secret. But the secret is 
understanding that sexuality, our sexuality is ever evolving. It changes. What feels good at one time may not feel good at another time. Our desire may be high one time, not so much another time. Within relationships, within ourselves. So this is the most important thing to retain, is that it evolves. You must reclaim pleasure. Nobody told us about sexual pleasure. Nobody taught us about recognize, recognize our bodies. So we grow um, with some cognitive distortion and with a false expectations about what is pleasure and sex. I, um, in my BSW internship, I work with um, prostate cancer patients. And in one meeting, the, the speaker was a doctor. And I don't know if you know that some of, of, of the men who have prostate cancer have this erectile dysfunction problems. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that the doctors say is that um, most of the problems with sexual dysfunction are in our head, in our mind. So that's why it's very important to know something about sex. I just have some information from the book. So the importance of learning about sexuality, to avoid false expectations, and to know that um, every person is sexually different. Every person is unique with different needs. Communication is one of the most important things uh, when we talk about pleasure and sexuality. We have to learn about each other. Um, sexual variety is something important for, for the sex, for example, or, um, communicate the needs and feelings about variety. What do you prefer? And when, when I say sexual variety, it doesn't mean that have different partners. It's, it means to do things different, but it's important that the couple are um, agree on what to do and communicate if they want to experience or change what they are doing. Sexual communication, the consent, communicate sexual desires and concern, empathy. It's very important that the couples know and feel that one care about each other. Um, talking, talk about sex. Some couples don't talk about sex, they don't just have sex and never say, um, do you enjoy it? Um, do you want to make something different? So it's very important to talk about sex know the, the knowledge that they have, how do you grow with sex? How are your parents? Do you have an idea of, about the sexuality of your parents? Listening and feedback. It is very important that people um, are a good communicator and a good listener too. And the feedback that they care, that they want to know about sex, the eye contact, discover your, your Partner needs, that's very important. We need to do open-ended questions. This, discuss the preference during sex. Do you want to start in this way, or do you want to use toys, things like that. Learn to make requests. People are not mind readers. So if you feel that something specific, for example, you, you can say, oh, today I feel so sensitive. So I need you to touch me softly at the beginning so I can be prepared or I need more time so don't penetrate me yet. So you need to express that or ask your partner what do you want to do today, what do you want me to do? Um, agree in what you, you do. Say no. If there is something that hurt you that you really don't want, just say no. And nonverbal as sexual communication, body language. If people, uh, the facial expression, the body language is very important. When people want to have like sexual intercourse, people um, decrease distance, touching, sounds. 
but communication is the most important when we have said and learn. That's and this is my presentation. Thank you.